Hello and welcome to Coding and a Cup of Java, lecture number 6, that's the last lecture and it's called more about methods because the last time we spoke about switch statements and methods but we, well, there are a lot of two, um, different things to talk about when it comes to methods so we're going to continue with that this lecture and go um, go to more specific things. We uh, went through the uh, more uh, generic things about methods, the the basics, and uh, and usually that's well that might be enough for most things, but some more specific things now. And then in the end, I'm also going to talk a bit about the assignment. So let's going, let's get going. Right. So um, I'm going to just start here writing an example, which is going to be a parameter example, because I'm going to talk a bit more about the parameters, how they are sent, um, well, how the values are sent to the parameters of a method. Um, so, um, yeah, here's a simple example. We start with the uh, main there. And then a simple method here, static void, my method, uh, and then a parameter here, like that. Okay. So now if I send something in here to my, my parameter, then that, that thing is going to be sent, I'm just going to send a value, I'm not going to say, send a reference to something, and I will show, show you exactly what I mean. So if I have a variable up here, I have very nice names, right, my variable, and it's, um, set it to 2. If I then print it all out, like this, nothing sp special there, that's obviously going to print out 2. Um, and then I can call the method, my method, like so. And then I use my variable here as the, the value of the parameter. Okay. Then if I change the parameter's value like this, my parameter, and then increase it by 10, and then print it all out like this. Okay. If I do that, uh, if I change the parameter here. Uh, then I, I'm obviously going to print out 12 because I had 2, increase it by 10, and um, print out 12. But what's going to happen is the variable here itself, that's going to stay intact. It's going to be 2, as we can see if we print it all out again. So if everything goes all right here, we'll see 2, 12, and then another 2. And the reason is, like I said, when we use parameters uh, in methods, we just send along a value. So we have the my variable's value and send that to the to the method. So even if we change the parameter afterwards, we're not going to change the value of the variable itself. So let's run that. Um, and then we get 2, 12, and 2. So far so good, right? So we only send along the, the value, so we can't refer, refer back to the, to the actual variable. Right. What happens if I change this and use an integer instead? Okay. So now I have an integer and then I have like 2, 4 and 5, for instance. Uh, comma there. And then I'm going to ask for a parameter here, of course, uh, the parameter is going to be an integer array instead. And I'm going to set this to a new um, integer array, like this. And that's going to be 6, uh, 2 and 10. Uh, but but for this to work properly, I need need something that allows me to print the uh, the uh, variables uh, of um, the integer array. You can't really um, you can do it like this. Uh, so at the moment, it's just going to show us some weird numbers. We can't really see what's in them, um, and that's what I spoke about uh, quite a lot earlier. You can convert everything to strings, but you never know what it's going to convert it to. So to allow us to see the content of those. Uh, integers easier, I'm going to write a simple method called print and then we just take an integer array uh, as the first and only parameter. Okay, so we start by by uh, showing a bracket there, just, just, uh, just for the start and then we have another bracket at the end like that. So what it's going to uh, show up as, as is the bracket and each element with a comma in between and then it ends with the, the other curly bracket. Uh, and as you can see I'm using print line in the end but not in the first one and that's so it will end with a new line character but we don't want that between everything we print out. 
and then it's a matter of looping through all the elements of the array like this we've, uh, we've done similar things before um, and um, if uh, i is not equal to zero then we want to do system.out okay so we want to add a comma in between each and every element but we don't want to add a comma the first time we add an element here because that means we're going to use a comma before the first element and we don't want that so we are checked that uh, i is not zero and that means that it's not the first first loop there and then we do uh, something like this so we can print out the uh, content of the array so now we can just call print here instead so we get some proper output instead of this thing here which refers to memory and stuff okay so here we go Yes, do print instead. So that's the uh, the new method there. Okay. So now if I hit compile, it should work all right, and I should run it. Okay. So what do we get? We get two four five. So that's the first one. Then we get six two ten, and then two four uh, five again. So what's going on now is the same thing. We send along uh, my variable here as uh, well here. To the, to the method as a parameter, but like I said, it's going to be sent along as a value, so even though we change the value of my parameter, we're not going to change the value of my variable. Okay, that's fine, it was the same for the integer, so that makes sense, right? Yep, it does, but what happens if we do it like this? Now we will get different things. So instead of giving my parameter a new array I'm just going to change my parameters element at index 0 and set that one to 3 instead so if I hit compile now and then run it I'm going to get 245 and then 345 and then 345 again so now all of a sudden I've changed the value of, uh, of my variable even though that is just sent along as a value to my parameter so how did that work well basically we send along the value still which we saw when we had had the old thing when we had, had this thing here because when we store something new inside my, my parameter then it's fine then, then we just store something new there we don't care about it coming from my variable or anything but what we do when we actually change a part of my, my parameter uh, like we did here then what we do is that we refer to the value we like remember we just send along the value to my parameter and then we refer to that value and change that value the problem is however that well that value is the same um, array we ha just have one single array we have one array with three elements we have the elements two four and five and even though I just ch send along the value it's the same value so if I change change a part of that instead of giving my parameter a new value comp uh, um, a completely new value so if I just change the element I'm actually going to change the element in the array that both are referring to and therefore it's going to show up as uh, my variable here and I'm going to show you another example so we can take another look on, on on these things that we send them along as, as values but if we refer to these objects that are called and just change parts of them then we're going to see that it's going to affect your original values well there will be more uh, discussions about this in the next course as well but I'm going to give you like I said another example on that a bit bigger one which is going to be about sorting a list of integers and we're going to want to print out the original list and also the, uh, the new one the sorted one so first we want to import the uh, java.util.scanner to be able to get some user input public class sorting example so this is going to be an example uh, about sorting like I said public static void main and then we just need the, these things here and then finally we need the scanner like always uh, my scanner equals new scanner system dot n like that okay so now when we have that uh, we can start with the program itself so first of all I want to be able to store the original values and I'm going to um, do it like that uh, 
not like that, like that. Um, so I want an integer array with, with the five elements. And then we can just ask the user for those five integers. Int i equals zero, i is less than original, origi uh, original, that's not spelled correctly, original dot length. And for each element we have in this array, we want to use it to, to give us that value. So then we do uh, original, I can't spell today. There you go. Original i equals, uh, and then we just do my scanner dot next end. So we ask the user for integer, and we store that in this in this specific array, and then we do that five times because the array has uh, five elements. So we can do a comment here, get the user input, for instance. Okay. So then we want to sort it. Um, how do we sort it? Well, I don't know. We we will probably have to write a method for it that sor sorts it. But um, well, for now, let's just do sort original. Okay. I don't know what that's going to do. Uh, well, exactly how that's going to be done. But it's probably going to sort it because we have to write it like that. And then we want to print out the result in the end. The uh, original array and then we want to um, get the string from the original array and that's also a method we will have to type uh, how does it get the, the the content from from an array like that like what do we print out and then we want to do the same thing here the sorted array get string of, the, of that one instead okay so what I've done now is shown another example oops why it could be good with with methods um I've basically done my whole program it's missing a few pieces that's that's correct but I've uh, done the whole program what I need to do I need a array to store the original values in. I need to ask the user for five numbers and store them in in the original array then I need to sort it and and uh store that in another array and finally print out the results like this. So that's the whole program. Even though I miss two things of course. I need mi I'm missing the sorting thingy and how I get the string from the arrays themselves, but I still have a good overview of what my program does because this is the code of my main program. So um so yeah, so let's actually get started with uh, with the sorting algorithm. I'm going to use the uh, bubble sort algorithm and there are uh, a few different algorithms that would work totally fine here, but I'm going to use a bubble source. So we want to return an integer array and we want to um, get an integer array. So we get the original one, we want to return the sorted one. Okay. So to sort this, I'm going to loop through all the different, num different numbers. And if they are in the wrong order, I want to um, swap them. Okay. But to do so, I need uh, two arrays. First, I need one, um, the inner one, to um, swap all the values until I get one number correct. But then I just have one number correct, and then I need to swap them again, and swap them again, and swap them again, until I, I get everything sorted. And you will see how that's going to work. Like this. So now, if if I loop through here, and swap, swap the... Uh, numbers around. So I'm going to swap them here if they are in the wrong order. Uh, if I do so, I make sure that the first number is in the end correct, right? So then when I go back to this loop and run through the inner loop once again, then there's no reason for me to actually check that first number as well, because I know it's correct already. Um, there's no reason to check uh, is this sorted number sorted because we know it is sorted because we sorted it last time and that's why this inner loop is going to be shorter and shorter every time it's make sure it it's leaving uh, the first number there all the time the first numbers that are, are already sorted so in the end it's just going to swap two one two numbers it's, well it's just going to check the two last numbers and if the, those are in the wrong order you swap them around and then it's going to check the last number and you well yeah Okay, so if these are in the wrong order, I'm going to sort it so we have the highest number first and the lowest number in the end. So if uh, if that's not the case, if these are in the opposite order, then we just want to swap them. 
Okay, so for to do that, uh, it's just a matter of uh, grabbing the number and store that in a uh, temp, uh, temp variable, and then um, yes, swap them like this, um, and then we do numbers j minus one equals the temp temp value like that. So this is going to store the value of numbers uh, at index j in temp, so then we can overwrite that with, with the uh, value at the other index there, and then we can store uh, what we stored in temp there uh, back in here. Okay, and, th and then what we can do is just add a comment here, if the values, and want to swap them. Okay, there you go. That. Um, so this is just a basic uh, sorting algorithm. So it's going to sort them, and then we want to return uh, the integer that was sorted, which is numbers like that. So then we can sort the original one and put that into sorted. But we're also missing one other thing: how we can get the string from from these uh, arrays, so we can print them out properly. And that's going to look quite. Uh, Quite a lot like the the thing I did last time, but last time I just printed it out. Now I'm I'm uh, actually going to return it as a string. So static string get string of an uh, no, integer array. And I'm just going to call it array. Okay. So we start with a bracket, a opening curly bracket like so. So we do a uh, a start bracket here, and in the end we want a Oops, I missed that. Uh, we want to add the closing bracket, so the end bracket, and then we finally want to return the string. But obviously we need to add a content as well. The content is going to go in here, and to do so, I simply loop through like I did before. So we start at i as 0, and then we have i is uh, less than the length of the array. So we can loop through all the, the elements of the array. And then we want to add that to the uh, uh, to the string like that. But remember, we also wanted this thing. So if it's not uh, the first element, then we also want to add uh, a comma and a space to make it look better. Because otherwise, they will just be put after each other in the string to see which where one integer starts and where the next one, uh, well, where, where one ends and where the next one starts. So right, so now we have a simple method here for for uh, converting one array to, to a string, and then we have something that sorts it. So right, so let's try it. Oh, well, we're missing one thing. We're not actually asking the user to enter five integers. Okay. Please enter five integers. Ah. Okay. Hit compile, save it. Um, and what did I miss now? Let's check the errors. Not a statement. Hmm, that's interesting. You know why? Well, there's not not a variable name there, so it didn't realize what was going on. Compilation completed this time. That's nice. And then I hit run. Okay, so please enter five integers. So let's add 50, 3, 20, 60, and minus 5. Okay, it sorted them all right. 60, that's the uh, largest one. 50, 23, minus 5. But the original one has the same order. And that's not the order I typed in there. Hmm. And that's a problem. So what we see now is what we had before. When we do this part here, we do... Um, sorted equals sort, and then we d use the value of original. When we refer to uh, to these things, we don't refer, the original here is not in any way connected to the numbers down there, but both of them are referring to the same array value. And therefore, if we change one of the arrays, then we change, well, there's only one to change, so it's going to be seen when, when we print out the original as well. So in the end, the sorted one here and the original one here, it's the same array, we, just, we have just stored it in two different ones. So, um, so yeah, it's a problem.
uh, in this case because we want to have two different arrays but as you can see we're never actually creating another array so it's quite obvious actually that we just have one here we create an array there where do we create another array we do never actually create another array we have to use the one we get of course if we create a new array here new and then we would then we would create a new array but then we don't have the data in it but it's but it also fine if we would do if we would do it like this um, if we hit compile now and if we run it and we do it like this um, right so if I enter five integers now 10 to 7 uh, 5 minus 2 like that um, as you can see I have two different arrays now I have the 10 2 7 5 and minus 2 um, and then we have 0 0 0 0 0 0 so as you can see we have now two arrays because I've created another array and therefore they are not connected and therefore well when I sort it I sorted zeros which is a bit weird um, then I'm not going to affect the original value so what I want is to create a new array but with the old values okay so how do I do that well there are multiple ways to do that we can just loop through here and, and add the values uh, but we can also use some built-in things so so let's do that uh, just to show you um, there are some things that we can do with arrays like some some helper methods that already exists and things like that so I'm going to import java.util.arrays and if I do so I can use that here so what I want to do is make a copy of the numbers the numbers array here and to do so I simply do uh, yes because I imported the uh, java.util arrays I can do arrays dot copy off so I can so I can copy numbers but I also need to tell it how much I want to copy of it but we want to copy the whole thing so therefore I'm just going to tell it well the length of the, the things you want to copy is the same length as the array itself so now as you, we saw uh, here we can get two different arrays if we create a new one and that's exactly what we do we create a new one but with the values from the old one so if I hit compile now and then I hit run and I can do 53 72 minus 5 there you go so now we get the original array 53 72 minus 5 that's exactly what I uh, entered but the sorted array is actually working so I copied the values and got two different arrays with the same values of course and then I sorted one of them instead of having the same array and sorted and well then I don't just have that single array so um, so that's how that works so that's nice so we can continue with this uh, because we have the swap here maybe we want to move that somewhere else because you know um, we might want to use it uh, in some some place uh, some other place and it, it's yeah it's it would be just neater to just type swap and then it would swap it all so let's let's create a thing that swaps them so I do uh, numbers J and then uh, numbers J minus one okay so how, how would that work so then I do static void swap um, value one and value two Uh, and term equals value one and then we do value one equals value two and finally value two equals value one um, and then we hit compile is, is this really going to work no it should be temp uh, but is this still going to work no it's not going to work at all okay please enter five integers let's do ten two three 20 minus 2 it's not going to sort it why isn't it going to sort it well the reason why it's not going to sort it is because the swap is not working so if we're doing the sort here and we can't swap them then well then we can't sort it at all and why isn't this working well like I said when we send things along to parameters we just send the value itself so so if I change this value one here, I'm just changing the value inside the, the the method itself. I'm not going to change what's in in the array here. The reason why we we had to make a new array here was because well the array itself its elements those values are just the values, but the the um, 
when we send along the, the array, we still just have one array. When we s send a primitive value like an integer, we just send the value and it's not going to have anything to do with the old thing. Because the, the numbers j here has nothing to do with the value one. Uh, and that's the same thing uh, up here. Where, where, where is it? Numbers here had nothing to do with the original apart from them actually uh, referring to the same array. They didn't refer to each other or anything. So to do this, well, we can't really do anything too well. We could, what we could do would be to have, we get an array and we swap two ind indices inside it. So then we do like int index one, and then we do int index two. This would work uh, because then we get an array and we, we just get the value of the array. But when, we're, well, when we have the actual array, we can modify it and that's going to modify it even up here. So if we do something like this, then we could do um, array index one, and we do array index one equals uh, array index two. So I do the same swap here, but now I'm operating on the uh, um, on the array instead of like that. And then if I send along numbers. And then, and then I give it j and j minus one because those are the different indices we want to swap. Um, well, we swap their values. And now, if I hit run, type uh, I don't know 20, 2, 3, 60, and uh, 300. Then it's actually going to sort them because now it can swap the values. So keep that in mind. We just send along the values, but if the values are point still pointing at the same same array, for instance, then we're not uh, going to be able to change one thing without changing the other because we still just have one array. If we just send along integers, for instance, if we change them, it doesn't matter. If we if we store something new in our array parameter, it's not going to matter either. But when we change the elements themselves, then that's going to be changed for, for both there. We're going to discuss this a bit more in the next course when we actually talk more about objects. But I wanted to show you it here because it's, it's very easy to... Um, to do something wrong here, you assume that that uh, it's not going to to uh, to change the other one, for instance, or you assume that it will. For instance, this part here, if we don't copy it and make a copy, then then the original will be be ruined because that's also going to be sorted because it's the same. Okay, so that so that was everything actually for for the parameters there, well, for uh, parameter values how they are sent along, and now we're going to talk about. Uh, uh, var args. So those are variable arguments, um, which means that we can have, mm, well, a variable amount of parameters. It's another name for parameters. So I'm going to do a var args example here. And, um, well, I'm going to start, uh, like I've done a few times before, actually start the example without actually using them. And then you will see why it's handy to use them. And also describe what they are, because I haven't said what they are. Okay, so that's the main thing in there. And then we do the uh, thing here. So I'm going to use a method that gives me the max value of x and y. A method like this already exists built in um, in uh, Java to due to the math or whatever, wherever that is. I don't know exactly uh, in the, in the math uh, library at least. Uh, so you, you could just do math dot uh, max and then get the numbers. But I'm going to use this as the example anyways. So if x is greater than y, then we want to return x because that's the greatest value of the two, or else we want to return y. Observe now that if x is equals to y, we are going to return y. But that doesn't really matter because if they are the same, then it doesn't matter which one we re result. Okay, um, right, so now if I can do system.r.println and then we do max 20 and 3, like that, okay? And then I'm going to do the maximum of uh, 1 and 6, for instance. Okay, so so far I haven't introduced anything new. But I will. So it just prints out 20 and 6, because 20 is the highest number there, and here's 6 the highest number. Um, what would I do if I wanted to compare three numbers, uh, like the highest of three? Well, I could do something like uh, max, and then 10 and 6, for instance. Now it's going to give me 10. So I just chain them together. 
okay, 20 and 10, like that. But it can get messy quite quick if you do it multiple times. So I want to, to extend this so we have a third number, okay? In C like that. And then we do if x is the greatest number of them all, then we want to return x. Else if uh, y is greater than z, then, then that's uh, the greatest of those two. And otherwise we return z like that. And as you can see, as you can see now, that um, I don't care about when they are equal to each other because it's going to work automatically by having it like this. Yes, because, um, well, if they are the same, then it doesn't matter which one we return. Okay, so now I need to uh, hit compile, but it's not going to work because now I'm just giving it two values. So, because I did, did allow three, I prevented it from using two. Okay, fine, fine, fine. Uh, well, let's have six there and then go with uh, 25. Okay, so now we have three values. It works fine. I'm going to get 20 and 25. What if we want any number? Well, any number of integers. Maybe I want to compare six numbers, which is the maximum one. What if I want to compare just two or three? Do I have to write a method for each of them? No, I don't. We have this called var args, which is a way of all for us to uh, tell that we want, well, we want some integers, but we don't know exactly how many. Uh, and how to use them is basically this. So we do int because that's the type. We want an inter integer, a lot of integers. And then I do dot, 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 a space, and then the name of the variable. So you can you can totally do this. It's totally fine. And then um, the numbers here is going to be uh, working like if it would be an array. So it's sort of creating an array for us. And then what I could do is do, uh, I will have to change this algorithm for sh uh, getting the maximum number. So what I do is I grab the first number and then I loop through the rest of the numbers, right? So I therefore I started with one because I've already used the first one. Uh, numbers dot length and increase that with, uh, with one, there we go. And if that number is greater than the maximum value, so we've actually found a value that is greater than the, the values we've seen so far, then we uh, set the maximum number to that, and in the end we can just return it. So this is just a simple, simple alg algorithm, how you find the maximum value in an array, and that's exactly what numbers actually are, even though we do dot 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 here. And what that dot 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 actually means is that, well, we can do it like this. So now I have one with three, parameters, integer parameters. I have one with two. I can compile. It's going to work. Well, if I, if I type the, the variable names correct in there. Um, so there we go. I can uh, compile it there and hit run. So there you go. It's, it's working. It, it can use two. It can use three. It can use... Um, it can use uh, four. It can use five, six, seven, eight. It can use how many it wants. Like that. So I can do that. Get the maximum number of all of those. If I didn't screw up that, uh, there you go. So it's still going to work. So just because I do so, it's going to um, to allow me to actually print how many I want here. But well, what I could also do, well, what we are actually doing is that we're creating an array of all these values. So it's basically a short way of sending an uh, sending an array in there, like so. So. Um, so we can actually give it the array itself, but if we don't, if we just give it a lot of integer values, it's going to use them uh, and create an array, and then we can use an array here in the code. Okay, is this all right so far? Well, so far maybe, but what if we do this? I said any any amount, right? Any amount of integers. Uh, that was a bit of a lie. You can't really have a negative amount of integers, right? How would that look? I don't know how you would do that, but you might have guessed you can have zero integers. That's totally fine. When we compile, we can uh, any numbers of integers is zero or more. And now, if I run, I'm going to actually crash my program. Sad face. And the reason is we're trying to refer to the first number here and store that in max. But if we don't have any number at all, then well, we can't refer to that first number. But well getting the maximum value of no values doesn't really make any sense. So how do I prevent it from, um, how do I prevent the user of a decoder from using max without any numbers? 
well, what I could do is just add another variable in front here, so first number, like so, well, another parameter, sorry, and then just use first number here, and then add this to change that to zero, so I loop through the rest of the numbers. So what I had before was that I grabbed the first number and loop through the rest. Now I pick the first number and loop through the rest. So I haven't changed anything. Well, the part I've changed is that I have a specific parameter here for the first variable. And why is that important? Well, parameters are a requirement. You have to enter the values for the parameters that we have in the parameter list, right? Yeah. That's true, and this is totally optional. You have zero to uh, zero and greater. Um, so by having one required one, we have one plus zero and more. So then, well, then that's not valid. We have to have at least one integer like that. So if we type five, then we can compile it. So we get a maximum number of five. It doesn't really make sense, but you're allowed to, and it's totally fine in the algorithm like that. So now you can't do a, an empty max here because we're asking for first one integer and then uh, zero or more, which allows us to do this long thing and also allows us to skip that one completely and just use the first one. So we get a maximum amount of one value. There you go. Okay. So that, that was that. So that was var args. We have spoken about parameter values. And what we're going to talk about now is the third thing about methods. And that's uh, called um, methods overloading. So we can overload methods. And I'll show you a simple example now. And then we're going to have a bigger example after the break because um, we will have a break in about nine minutes. Okay. So public class overloading loading. Uh, example like that, and we need the uh, static void main here, like this. And what we want to have here now is a static void my method method like so, and then we want to have a string parameter. Okay, so far so good, not nothing new. My parameter, there we go, and then we want to print that out. Maybe I don't know, but Let's add another method. <laughs> okay, so what did I just do? I created another method with exactly the same name. Hmm. Okay, so what is this? Well, this is uh, method overloading. So what we can do is we can have multiple methods with the same name as long as their parameter lists are different. And by different I don't mean different names for the parameters but different types. So we have a string here and we have an integer there so it's totally fine. So what I can do now is do system.add.print line and then look a string. Like that. Um, and then we can actually print out the value as well because well we should probably use the parameter from s for something like that, and then I can do the same same thing here, but print out that we found an integer. Uh, look, an integer, and here we want to print out the integer. Uh, my parameter. So as you can see, these two uh, methods are quite uh, well, looks quite a lot like each other, and that's just because this is an example. So Two methods, different parameters. How do we use them? Well, how do you usually call a call a method? Well, you use its name and give it its parameters uh, like that. Oops. Or you could do it like uh, this, for instance. Oh, basically something like that. So now we have three method calls here. We have one method call here where we send along hello. We have one that says uh, five and one that says cake. If I run it, well, I need to compile it first. Uh, what did I do? Hmm. I saved it as something else here. Um, so as you can see, the, the, uh, it uh, suggested that I was saved with a lowercase l there, and also because I already had that file. So the easiest way to do is just change my class name here, otherwise I would have to rename rename the file. So there we go. Um, so I have mentioned that before, the class name here has to be the exact same 
as the, the file we save it in. Okay, there we go, we run it. A look at string, and then it says hello here. Look an integer, and then the five there, and look a string, uh, and then we have cake. So what it's actually doing is when we have the parameters here, it's looking for a method called my method, but it's looking for, for that with the same parameters as the value we supplied with. Is that something new for us? Not really, if you think about it. Okay, so I want to print out 5. I want to print out hello. Both are going to work. Why? Well, there are multiple methods called print line, or well, print ln, but one accepts an integer and one accepts a string. So there's nothing really weird about it. And then we can do my method true, for instance. What's going to happen now? Well, if we compile it, it's going to say, well, the <laughs> there's no method called my method that accepts one Boolean value. Which is the case, because we was just have one for a string and one for an integer. So what we could do is create a third one. Static uh, void my method. Oops. Method and then do uh, boolean my parameter, like so. And then I can do something similar like, like this one, so I'm just going to copy it, like that. And then we can do look uh, boolean value. And now I can compile it all of a sudden. Well, I thought so, if I spelled boolean properly. Boolean, there you go. Hit compile. And run it. And now all of a sudden we have look a string and the integer and the string and then we have five and hello and then we have look a boolean value and then the value itself there. Right. So let's add a, a second one, a second uh, method here. Oh, well, it's a fourth really, but a second one with the boolean my parameter. And um, well, it's going to be fine, right? Because I want a string from it. Return hello. It's not going to be fine. Because how are we going to see which one we're, we're asking for? So, here we go. It's already defined. We, we, can't, we, can't, we, we, we can't do this, because it's the same uh, list of parameters. So, the, the return value doesn't matter. We can have different return values on, on a method that is called the same, but, well, the, the parameters li lists can't be the exact same thing. But I can add another Boolean value here. My second parameter. So it's not about the type only, it's the, the whole list of parameters. So now I have two different ones, so therefore it's unique compared to this one here. And then I can do like my parameter equals my second parameter like so. And if that's the case then we want to print out the same, or we'll return, and otherwise uh, different. So this is a ternary operator that we spoke about in lecture 2. Okay, so now I can use that, my method, in something like this. Um, my method and then give it true and false for instance. So those are different. Those are different so it should give me something. Uh, parameter. I can't spell today. Okay, so now I run it and in the end it's going to type out different. So at the moment these different methods here, they don't really make any sense. Why would, would we even have them? Why would we call them the same same thing? But this is the first example. After the break I'm going to show you a bigger example where we can use it. We, we will see some familiar code that we've seen before and I'm going to do some um, method overloading there. But like I said, that's after the break. Um, so that's about it. I'll see you after the break.